Nicole Strickland. I have been fascinated with the unknown and paranormal realms since childhood. After a profound experience with my grandmother's spirit 20 years ago, I have been on a quest to observe, study, investigate, and communicate with the afterlife and beyond. It's been an ongoing journey of exploration and discovery, one that has taught me how mortality and the spirit world are forever bonded through the veils of time. One, uh, just um, I'm having some mic issues. Can you guys hear me okay, Pete? Can you give me a thumbs up? Okay, good. <laughs> We've had some storms in the area today, so I was having some computer issues. But anyways, super excited for tonight's show. Hope you guys are doing well. Just a recap of the show before us, Realm of Darkness, my Lord. If you have not listened to that show, it's it's insane. So Rini and Ashley talked about the McCamey Manor. Uh, extreme haunted house in Summertown, Tennessee. Oh my gosh, I think there's like a 40 page waiver that you have to sign. I mean, it's it's like you come out of there and you're supposed to get bruises and broken bones and all kinds of stuff. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm like shaking in my boots here just listening to the show. But it's, obviously it's been archived. So uh, go listen to that um, if you missed the show. And of course, uh, Welcome back to the Afterlife Chronicles, of course, right here on WLTKDB.com. Uh, glad to see everyone there. Super excited for tonight's show. Of course, I'm your host, Nicole Strickland. If you haven't followed us, just with that handle, WLTKDB. And then, of course, the Afterlife Chronicles at Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond and Afterlife Chronicles.podbean.com. And uh, just a couple of announcements before, before we bring in tonight's guest, Pete Orbea. We've had him on before. You guys know him of the Para Paranormal Pete Show, Paranormal Investigator Extraordinaire, Psychic Medium, you name it. So super excited for that. Just a couple of announcements. So you've all been waiting for it. And Haunted Voices Radio is returning September 16th at Friday, uh, on Friday nights now, actually, at 10 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. And... Um, uh, no, 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 Central, 8 p.m. Pacific. Sorry, I knew that. I knew I had that wrong. So uh, first guest is Caden Mask. And then after that, we are having uh, Henry San Miguel of the OC Paracon, which leads me right into the next announcement. OC Paracon uh, on October 1st and 2nd. Uh, tickets are still on sale there, ocparacon.com uh, there. And of course, myself and uh, Pete Orbea will be speakers and panelists there. So we're super excited about that. And then, as I mentioned before, I think it was last week, uh, so a little bit of a publishing change in my upcoming book, The Afterlife Chronicles, exploring the connection between life, death, and beyond. Uh, so that, I'm looking to publish it in December. So I don't have an exact date yet, but sometime in December. So very excited about that. So let's not waste any more time here. Let's go ahead and bring Pete Orbea in. You all, you know him now, Psychic Medium. Uh, director of uh, Poor Gamble Paranormal Tour Guide, a host of the amazing show Paranormal Pete. So welcome, Pete. How are you? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. It's fun to be back on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You're always welcome. Of course, here I go with my water. Always, always. <laughs> When you were making the announcement about Haunted Voices, I don't know why, but the first thing I thought to do was Frank the Tank. <laughs> right? I know. And then I'm like, hey, I said, wait, 10 p.m. Eastern? That's not right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can I get my time zones right? Oh, my gosh. I'm so Darn time zones. Right now. Oh, my gosh. And then so we've had thunderstorms today and it's like Florida out there. So it's like super hot. So the Internet was laggy upstairs. So I'm downstairs, but it's all good. So <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes. So we have EVPs tonight, folks. So you have been super generous. I think, what do you have here? Like six, one, two, three, four, five. So six EVPs. We can definitely yeah. get to those. Super excited. I always love when people have audio to play on the shows. It's and yeah. I've listened to them, folks. So these are great ones. But I know that you've wanted to talk a little bit about evidence review. So, you know, photography, videography, audio, things like that. We can get into shadow people, apparitions, all of that. So let's just get right yeah. into it. So um, let's get into evidence review. So uh, yeah. on your investigations, uh, you, you know, I, I think that evidence review, and it's, it's funny how 
people, I, I think I mean, we're all amateur investigators. I get that. But I, I find it funny how a lot of the newbies want to come in and it's like, oh, it's all about the investigation. That's it. Just those hours that you're there and then you forget you know, the evidence review process is just as important, if not more important than the investigation itself. Yeah. So what are some of your uh, processes that you use for for uh, reviewing evidence and documentation as well? Well, it kind of varies from <laughs> investigation to investigation, but that's kind of the name of the game, right? Yeah. Uh, each investigation is different. You can, you can set up you know, the same controls mostly in, in any investigation, but that all, it all kind of varies. And, and I like how you set it up there. And uh, this is, you know, part of presentation I'll be doing at the OC Paracon. And I think it's really important to talk about this part of it because human nature, we want to do things exciting and that's the investigation part, right? It's like, I could do that all the time. That's so fun. But then you're like, oh, wait, how many hours of audio? How many hours of video? Uh-oh. I know. <laughs> and I got to go to work on Monday? Uh-oh. Right? Right. Right. And especially if you have more than one case in a month, it's like, okay, we got to get this information to the clients. My goodness. Right. I have 16 right. hours of audio and all these photos to go through. But right. Like you said, yeah. it's the name of the game. Yeah. And, you know, we all love the exciting part. And it's, I guess, to answer your question, uh, as far as process as well, if you do some things during your investigation, it's going to make the evidence analysis and data review a lot easier in the right. long run. So meaning note taking, <laughs> you know, that's if you if you, you know, so the, during the exciting part in the investigation, you know, if you take really good notes, um, whether it's written, I don't know if you can write in the dark. I can't. Um, I try, but, um, I, I can't usually, ride either in, it, yeah. even in the light. So yeah, it, the best thing is like, if you have two audio devices or more, um, you can set one or more, you know, in a static location, but then you can carry one with you for your notes and you just say everything and you timestamp, you know, let's say you thought you heard a, a voice, you know, at 9 31 PM. Well, if you say it on your recording, you've got it noted. So when you're reviewing audio, you can go to all your other audio devices uh, and check at that 931 and you can see if, if anything was captured there. So note taking is the first process. And then the second process is if you, especially if you're on a team, this is more like, you know, if, if it's more than one person, which really you shouldn't be investigating by yourself anyways, but for more people assign, assign the roles for a review of what people like to do. <laughs> that is a good point because people do not want to be pigeonholed, you know? So I think, you know, it, it, that's a good point because some teams will just assign and let's say your, your specialty is an audio and it's yeah. more in the videography. Well, obviously that person's going to be more comfortable with that. So that's a good point. Yeah. And I think it, you know, it's something that can be missed, you know um, you know, when you're assigning things and, and, I hate video review. I don't like video I don't, review. So <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> if I'm on a team, right? If I'm on a team and it's like, and I keep getting assigned, you know, the video review, well, I'm going to get complacent about it mm -hmm. probably because I don't like it in the first place. And then I'm probably increase the chances of missing something. Right. Um, you know, so I like to do audio. I really like audio review. So, me too. You know, if you assign me to do audio review, I'm into it. I'm passionate about it. I'm going to listen carefully. I'm going to, you know, really scrutinize things. And so that's another process of just getting the team roles established for uh, who's doing what kind of review. And then, um, you know, the third big thing, I guess, about it is um, peer review. Um after you do your initial data review. So, you know, peer review, uh, you know, with your team and then maybe externally as well, if you can, if you have the, the resources, get things peer reviewed and then, and then reporting is kind of the last process of it. You know, what, how do you report what you found? Uh, especially if you're working with a client, right? You're, you know, 
somebody at a residential house, you know, you want to be able to report it in a way that's uh, succinct and um, but has some context and that it makes sense to the client. <laughs> right, right. Excellent point. What What are your thoughts on, because I know some, everyone's different and everyone, you know, has their own uh, opinions and ways of doing things. So do you, I, I kind of, how I label it, label it is objective data, if you will, if you want to use that word is something like, okay, if, if it's something maybe you saw, uh, maybe you heard, um, a, a word or a disembodied voice, or uh, let's say uh, something that you that you can you know objectively report versus something more like subjective, like maybe an, an intuitive impression or something like that. Do you have a, a certain protocol with that? Like, do you tell people like if it's intuitive or it's if it's a psychically inclined impression to to note it down on paper and share later, or are you okay with with that person sharing? as the investigation is going? Uh, again, I think it depends on the investigation. If it's a historical location and a client isn't involved, I think it's maybe a, a more okay to share information as you go along. I agree. Um, but if you're working with a client, um, and especially if they're there with you, um, they're probably observing the investigators. And so if you can keep, you know, tight controls, you know, for personal experiences or psychic experiences, trying and keep some controls, I think that will lend to more credibility when you report to the client any findings. Does that make sense? I, I yeah, and that's actually that's why I asked it. That's 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 what we do as well. And I think there's there are little subtle differences between a historical case and like a, a private residence or a business case. Yeah. So you know, and I've I've been on a couple of cases where uh, as a guest on um, uh, private residence investigations and. It was interesting on a couple of these where there were some people almost leading the homeowner and so kind of just not commiserating with her, but just kind of kind of lending that power of suggestion to the homeowner. So that's, in my opinion, you want to avoid that and just be, you know, objective about it all. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's that's something I, you know, honestly learned from experience from sharing things in in front of the client and then they really oh whoa you know they were <laughs> and that can skew things and so i kind of you know had to hindsight was 2020 20, you know, yeah after the you know investigation and as you know i went on it was kind of like oh yeah I sh if the client's there try and you know try and just write everything down or if you're doing vocal logs wait you know go in another room or something Right. Um, Absolutely. You know, say stuff. Yeah. Syncing up the time, like you said, is very important. You know, mm -hmm. like if you're starting your, your audio, you're going to obviously notate the time you're going to start it, but also notate that recorder time as well. Yeah. So then in the review, you can go back and say, oh, okay, well, yeah, like at 9 31 PM, we had this experience and whatnot. So, and that's interesting. I can't wait to hear your, your talk at the OC Paracon. So your, your talk is primarily going to be on, <laughs> the the documentation and the um evidence review right evidence review yeah so it'll kind of get into you know some different things you might come across with audio or photos or video what do you do with it um and just like the labeling and um and the reporting and a lot of it's stuff i've learned from other investigators right you know, me too like, who have really good established scientific method in what they do and it's you know uh just being able to learn that and then share it is uh i hope people like it it sounds boring <laughs> you know on the face value it sounds kind of boring it's fun i know no but it, it is fun though once you get into it and i'm like you i prefer audio over video i mean if obviously there is video to review it's going to get reviewed and the photos are going to get reviewed as well but that yeah. there's something about audio it's just you know I, I can't wait to just dive in and and all of that so specifically about that let's say you're or with any evidence review but let's just go with audio since since you prefer it yeah. Do you have a preference as to when you start reviewing it? So let's say you have an investigation on Saturday night. Do you start the next day or do you prefer to wait a few days and just let things settle? What's your process for that? Well, I think in, 
in my case, it's more of uh, when can I do it? <laughs> um, yeah. What do I ha what do I have going on? Uh, you know, I I almost never like review stuff the next day, so it's always you know a few days, uh, a few days to a week later, then you start getting you know get into it. Let it um, settle. You know, you're not comatose on the couch after investigating all night long. <laughs> <laughs> so. And then have, yeah, then have like eight hours of audio or something because eight hours of audio would be 16 hours of review. So it's, that's, I you know, have you found that for audio for every one hour, it's two hours? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's so funny because sometimes I can sit there for 20 minutes and then other times I can sit there for an hour, but I think breaks are important and i i fail at that because i'm just one of these like i want to get into it and before you know it i'm there sitting there three hours i'm like geez i haven't even taken a break yet yeah so, <laughs> yeah so um yeah, that's so a good you, point pace yeah, yourself pace yourself yeah, yeah yeah definitely definitely um pace yourself so so if you had uh let's say a, a beginner investigator join you on let's say let's pick a historical case and let's say this person was with you, you know, teamed up with you for the night. What are like the top five things you would want this beginner investigator to know after that investigation? After the investigation? Or during. Actually, after is not right. It'd be maybe before, during, and after. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Let's do the whole gamut. Top there. five things I would want them to know. <laughs> top 100 uh, things. No, I'm just kidding. I would want them to know their intention, I guess, would be number one. And I would want them to uh, have something to take notes with, vocal or notebook. A good little notepad um, comes in handy, folks. I would want them to be open-minded um, to possibly experiencing something, possibly not. Could go either way. So I want, would want them to be open-minded to things. And number four, I would want them to be uh i guess aware um have investigation awareness you know um be quiet when someone's doing an audio session you know don't walk around too much if you don't have to um you know situational awareness i guess um and number five um have fun <laughs> there you go see and you know what I like about your answers is they were not all investigative related. So you're getting into almost the foundation of an investigator. So, you know, intent is very important here. You know, they, that's that, you know, the have fun, be aware. These are all like foundational, you know, qualities of an investigator. So I like that. You know, all this other stuff can come later. You know, you can learn how to, to, to review audio. You can learn the, the processes of an EVP yeah. session. But having that just foundate those foundational traits super super yeah. cool and if you're if you're newer at it like you don't know what kind of investigator you are you know right. you know you don't know yet so yeah. that's why the open mind that's kind of why i thought of that because you don't know what kind of investigator you're going to be and you, like you said you know things can come later well yeah you'll niche down yeah and you know the more you do it and then you'll kind of figure out what kind of investigator you are because I think there's different kinds of investigators, right? I We're do all, too. You know, so you kind of take some time to figure out. But yeah, if you're newer, if you don't know who you are yet as an investigator into this world. <laughs> into this world of the paranormal. And I'm still learning. I'm still I, learning. I was you just going to say, me too. I, I always, like, there's always like a gazillion things I learn on every case. I almost yeah. still think like I'm a beginner. I mean, I think, in, you know, I mean, there's. I feel like we all are in some cases, even though we've been doing it for a while, there's yeah. always something to learn. So, yeah. Um, but speaking of cases, have you uh, been, have you gotten any new cases lately or any, any fun uh, cases that you've done recently that you would like to talk about? Well, I didn't really take anything on during COVID <laughs> and me too. Yep. So I've, I've just been kind of focused here in Port Gamble. Um, I've had a couple opportunities, but just haven't been able to um, yeah. nail that, nail it down. So, um, you know, more or less just, you know, continuing the research here in Port Gamble and continuing on at the, at the Walker Ames house and, and having personal experiences on the tours and, 
uh, the public investigations. So that, that's been fun. It keeps you sharp. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's great that, you know, you have this one location or, I mean, it's not just, I mean, it is a location. Super lucky. <laughs> very, I, and I've been there. I've been there once. I can't even believe it. I can't wait to go back. It's truly an iconic town. It's, it's truly amazing. And not only do you have the Walker yeah. Ames, but there's so many different locations within this town that are just not only historic, but just yeah. Truly, truly amazing in terms of, you know, having a lot of paranormal activity. So with your tours, I'm, I, and I know a lot of listeners already know about your tours, know about per, Port Gamble, but if let's say there are a few that don't. So your tours, uh, talk a little bit about those and like mm -hmm. where you take people during, during the yeah. tour around the town, like what they can expect. Um, well, the tours are three hours long. It sounds like, oh my gosh, three hours. By fast. But it takes, <laughs> yeah, I bear, I rarely get done right at three hours. It's usually three hours and 10 minutes or 15 <laughs> minutes. Uh, there's just so much material to cover. So my tour, uh, starts, um, this, the, for those that don't know, it's a, it's an old sawmill town. Uh, it's one of Washington state's oldest towns founded in 1853, and our newest oldest house here is 1859 the newest house is 1919 and um so it's a really interesting place it's like going back in time into a town in maine uh driving through here so the tour starts in the historic museum here and it's the whole tour in general i guess is uh it's a history tour because there's a lot of interesting history uh, about the people and the buildings and the town, but it's not just a history tour because there's tons of experiences that I talk about and share. And I try and share a lot of my own experiences that I've had. Um, and because I, I was there, <laughs> you know, and I yes, can talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, so that, that's, you know, and then we end up with, um, we go to the post office building in the cemetery, um, and then we end up with about an hour or so in the Walker Ames house uh, and take everybody through it. And, uh, it, what you can expect is, I, I don't know what you can expect. You can expect possibly some activity to happen, you know, on the tour, uh, that happens pretty frequently. Um, you know, but you can expect, a, uh, three hours of history and ghost stories and a lot of laughs. So <laughs> that is right up my alley. You know, that's how I would want to spend my afternoon or evening. Let me tell you. Yeah. So have, have, so what are the most common reports from, from your uh, attendees that they, that they have? Is there any pat? I'm kind of going with, are there any patterns with sure. what people are reporting? Voices, female voices more specifically. Wow. and footsteps and hair pulling touching um but it's mostly audible type stuff so footsteps and voices is frequently what happens and occasionally someone uh earlier this year I had somebody on an investigation which is like the tour but it's all in the walker ames house and we go through the whole house and um this poor lady had her hair lifted it straight out and pulled oh tight gosh. um yeah and so that was cool to you know to experience that probably not for her i think she <laughs> freaked her out but literally it went uh, up like and stayed up there like that yeah it had some slack in it and then it went straight and um she she had just thought prior to that that she had uh, she felt her hair get pulled. And so we were doing all the things, checking the area, looking above us, below us. Is there any wires, spider webs, anything that could have caught her hair? And then I had her kind of, you know, move her head around to see if her hair would get caught on her coat at all. Oh, that's or a any, good point. A zipper or anything. And, and when she, as soon as she stopped doing that, then a big, about an almost an inch thick swath of her hair went up in a group like this and then went psh. and oh she freaked God. out she freaked out when she saw my reaction and the guy standing next to me because we both our eyes got huge like Whoa. i can imagine oh my you know that's a similar experience and i'll keep this short on the queen mary i wasn't there but it was down in the um my friend pat wheelock used to run tours on the ship down in the uh forward cargo hold pit there was a he was leading a tour down there similar thing this woman had her hair in a ponytail 
and there was a strand that apparently like went up by itself and like what stood straight up and he did the same thing you did. He was checking for wires, anything that could, that she could have done to cause it. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that, that's like insane. That's an insane amount of energy. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it was, that was a good, that was a good one, but you know, that we're lucky that that kind of stuff, you know, they, the long-term residents there do interact. So, <laughs> and are you finding that? So a lot of the energies, uh, at the Walker Ames may travel to other areas of Port Gamble and vice versa. Is it a mix where it's mm -hmm. just, it's not like, okay, there's certain energies at the, the Walker Ames and then there's certain groups at the cemetery. It's like, they all kind of like mix in with each other. Yeah. I think there's a bit of that going on. Um, I think one of the most frequently heard residents of the home is possibly from a house across the street, but comes over to the Walker Ames house. I don't know why I just, I just have keep, that's just what I've thought the last few years. Like I just, I just feel like I know it like this, this has to be how it is. <laughs> so, but I think they do. I think they can uh, move in and out. It seems like based on reports from other teams and, um, you know, people on tours, it does seem like occasionally in that house, there's something that doesn't belong. Um, there's someone that's, you know, I shouldn't say the word vagrant, but it's like a vagrant spirit stopping there and then it goes somewhere else. Um, you know, that seems to happen there at least, you know, um, it's never been proven, <laughs> but it's what it seems like. Yeah, I have to trust your intuition on that. I think, you know, there's uh, some people feel that, you know, earthbounds or, or ghosts, if you will, are stuck and can't travel. But yet, I mean, I've had a lot of experiences that that suggest that they can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I was asking you. And it's interesting to kind of note those patterns, you know, looking at what people are reporting and when they're reporting it, if anything new is happening, things like that. So when you are have the ability to research one location, not just historically, but paranormal wise. I mean, over so many years, like yourself with poor gamble, it's, you know, not too many people have that opportunity. And so that comes, there comes a difference between an investigation and a case study. And I'm just of the personal opinion that case studies, I think lend more because you have obviously more time spent at that location and not mm -hmm. many people get that option. So it's more like a yeah. case study for you. I'm super lucky to be able to, to research that place. <laughs> Abs absolutely. What about visual sightings there? Mm -hmm. um, apparition, shadow, shadow energies, things like that. Yep. I've, I've, um, I physically ran into something, but didn't see it. So that wasn't visual, I guess, more physical. Oh, sometime. I think I remember you talking about that. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, uh, had a, uh, I don't know if I can say full bodied apparition, but it was an apparition. Um, I couldn't see the whole, I didn't see the whole body, but it, it happened fairly quick. But um, it, there was some people and I doing a tour in the Walker Ames house and the whole group was opposite of me in this, in this front kind of greeting foyer there. And we had the lights off because, you know, ghosts don't come out in the light. Um, <laughs> and I was just talking about the history of the place and starting to share some stories. And, and we heard kind of like a, what sounded like a foot drag on the floor behind me. And so natural instinct is to turn and see what's there. And so I turned with my flashlight and there was a woman there and she had like brown hair that was, looked kind of messed up a little bit. I don't know if it was a style or what, but uh, she disappeared to be looking straight ahead, like out the front windows is the direction she was looking. But we then all gasped as a group. <gasps> I imagine so. Oh my goodness. And then she was gone. She was just gone. And so leaving, we all walked through the hallway that she seemed to come out of. And it just, I mean, it felt like, thick spider webs like it felt like walking through jello <laughs> through that hallway and it's like super thick and everything um so i don't know who she is it happened fast 
everybody seemed to see her. Everybody said they saw her. That's just, phenomenal when you can have a group sighting like that. And what I, when I immediately started like replaying it in my head, the one thing I noticed was when my flashlight got her in right in the eyeballs, just it happened to be how I turned and there was no reaction at all to that. There was no blink or flinch and it was just straight. And then we all <gasps> gasped and then she was gone. Um, that was really cool. <laughs> yeah. It almost, I mean, yeah, no, I mean to have a, a group sighting like that where everyone sees it at the same time, yeah. that's insane. It almost sounds like re maybe residual in that case. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I wasn't there, so it could have been, yeah, it could have been something like that. Cause she didn't seem to react to us at all. And then she right. was just, poof, just gone. Um, I had another one that's, that's, intrigued me <laughs> for the I, this happened in last year and i was at the walker ames house it was about 10 at night and i was um waiting for some investigators to stop by they wanted to do a quick um quick investigation and so i was down there it was like 10 at night and nobody else in town so if you've ever been here late at night there's nothing going on <laughs> so it was my car on the street and pre COVID the general store building here would be open later uh, and into the evening. And so oftentimes my ghost walks get over at 10 and maybe the, the guys are bringing out the garbage and closing up and, and closing up and get leaving for the night around that time. So over time we would say, Hey, it's me down here <laughs> so that they wouldn't get freaked out. And I, you know, we know that the someone's there. I didn't. I didn't want them getting freaked out of someone in the Walker Ames house, and they're like, "Oh, is it a ghost?" You know. <laughs> so we. So we would just say like, we'd just say, "Hey, it's me." Or, "Hey, I'm down here," sort of thing. So that was like pre-COVID, and, and and kind of post-COVID, they've been closed earlier. So it's you would not likely see anybody coming out of there around 10 p.m. at night. Right. So I had forgot something in my car. I walked down the back ramp on the on the house there and I turned 90 degrees to walk down the rest rest of the ramp to the sidewalk. And as I made that turn, I heard the general store door shut front wow. door shut pretty loud. And so I looked down there and there was a guy walking out and he had a white shirt on and light brown pants. I thought it was real. It may look like a real person. And we walked, we got to the sidewalk just about at the same time. And I turned to say, hey, it's me. And as soon as I started to talk, he was stepping over a big curb and just oof, gone. Wow. And so then I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so, no kidding. So I did walk down there and walked around the corner of the, of the building and there were no cars nobody getting in a car leaving there was just no cars anywhere nobody i could see, find anybody so i'm thinking i might have seen something there because I mean, the guy looked the dark hair kind of you know an olive complexion uh and just walked out kind of the same time I was going down and we both got to the sidewalk and then he just disappeared. Just like that. Like just quick. Yeah. Did it like, did he disappear <clears throat> like a mist or just, just, just completely disappear? Just poof gone. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I love hearing these stories. These are, this is, this is phenomenal stuff right here on that note though. We have to take our one and only break for the night. Of course, you're tuning into the afterlife chronicles with special guest, Pete Orbea of the paranormal Pete show. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Negri. Hi, I'm Pete Orbea. Hi, this is Nicole Strickland. My name is Hero. And my name is Sean Clem. Hey everybody, Cleek Keith here, author of Ghost of Greystone Beverly Hills. 
I'm excited to invite you to the OC Paracon, which is going to be the first week in October. Now that's just some of the people you're going to meet at Orange County Paracon. That would be Anaheim's first ever paranormal conference. I'm Henry, the organizer and also the host of Paranormal Perception, inviting you to meet those people that you just saw. You'll meet everybody, including some guests, some people that we haven't even announced on the website. It's going to be a surprise. Everything, info, tickets available on that website, OCParacon.com. Dot com. Hope to see you to kick off our favorite time of the year in Anaheim at OC Paracon. Thirty-five minutes past the hour. Of course, you're tuning right back into the Afterlife Chronicles, right, he- right here on WLTKDB Network.com. Network.com. Oh my gosh, what a brain! WLTKDB.com, folks. Okay, that is the website. My goodness, <laughs> hello there. <laughs> so if you missed the, if you missed the first half, don't worry, it'll be archived for you tonight. We have a special guest, Pete Orbea, on. Uh, we've had a great discussion. Some good pointers on uh, documentation and evidence review uh, during paranormal investigations. Some of his experiences on his tours in Port Gamble and out of uh, and the Walker Ames house. I can't talk tonight. You know what? I just I might as well just end the show right now. No, I'm it's the it's the today. storms. It's the storms. They're messing with me because we don't usually get lightning here, folks. See what it does to our brains in San Diego? My goodness. <laughs> Anyways, enough about that. And another thing too. I'm usually pretty good with the comments and I totally blinked. There's some people in comments here. Nikki is joining us. Nice to see you, Nikki. Candy says, hi, Pete. I'm so sorry about this, folks. Linda, <laughs> nice to see you there. Oh my gosh. Let's see you. Sharon. Hi, everyone. Uh, let's see here. Great. I don't, great comments here. I'm just going to say this one because it's long and it's awesome. Robin and I, Nikki says, Robin and I were investigating with a group in the theater during a passport gamble. Gamble. I can't talk. Ghost conference. <laughs> we used a spirit box to ask how many people are in here with us tonight. And the box said nine. Oh, that's awesome. After doing a quick head count, there were only seven of us there that we could see. Ooh, interesting. Uh, we have Henry. Hi, Henry. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot to flash hey, all these Henry. comments. Great. So sorry about that, folks. My goodness. It just dawned on me like, whoa, there's 15 comments in here. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So we have some EVPs tonight. So yeah, yeah. I love it. So you have been gracious to send us some EVPs. And so mm-hmm. there are six here. So I'm hoping we can get to all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have Annabelle queued up here as well. That's... At first. Now, were all of these EVPs or some of them uh, disembodied voices? So, yeah, so I've I've been playing these ones for a while, so I'm sure some people have heard a couple of these. There's some that some people, most people haven't heard, but um, so the Annabelle one and another child one is uh, actually all three that I sent from Port Gamble were disembodied voices and happened to happen to catch it. Um, wow. And the other ones, I were, they were all EVP. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, uh, do you would you prefer just to play it once and then you talk about it, or do you want to set it up first? How, what are your preferences on that? Uh, we can play it, and then um, then we can talk about it. All right, let's go do that. Let's uh, play Annabelle. <laughs> So that was really cool. <laughs> That's my yes, prob- it was. probably yes. the best one I'll ever get. <laughs> Hopefully not, but maybe. Um, so I was with Olympic Peninsula Paranormal Society. And we were investigating the Walker Ames house. And you hear investigator Mary Bethune on there. And she heard had heard a voice downstairs, which I ended up getting on my audio device. Um, she heard it. None of us, none of, nobody else did. Um, so we had gone up to the second floor and, t- and some of the team had broken off to um, do a ghost box session. And then the rest of us kind of went up in the, at the top of the main staircase, which seems like that's 
that's where the action's at. <laughs> so, right. Right. Um, so um, Mary was asking questions and then the, this voice responded once and then she asked him the next question, you know, what's your name? And then that was the response. So we got two answers, direct answers to questions and it was disembodied and man, it felt like an explosion of energy through the hallway when the voice came out. It was like, oof, punch to the gut type feeling. Amazingly, amazingly clear. And I imagine that's Mary confirming that at the end. You hear She's Annabelle. repeating what she heard. Right, right. Oh my gosh. Let's play the, that one more time yeah. just because it's it's really it's awesome. <laughs> wow oh my gosh sounds like a young very young uh mm -hmm. girl in my opinion that's yeah. phenomenal that's truly phenomenal yeah and she's she's a frequent flyer at the house so. <laughs> have you dot have you figured out historically who she may be not yet not yet i so have that's, that's in process i have i have found some annabelles um but the time period did not make sense to me because um, it was either way before that house was built. And I don't believe there was a house in its place before that. Um, so I, the time to, the, based on the year of the census, because I've had census records I can look through. Right. And it just didn't make sense. So I'm still looking. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. But she's I think she is from. The house across the street. That's the one that I just believe she's not from that house. She's from a different house, but she comes over there. Comes over there. I wonder if there's maybe other child energies there that she, you know, connects with or, or, or another, even an adult spirit that maybe she connects to. Yeah. I had the fortunate opportunity to, to visit the Walker Ames house in 2000. I think it was 2017 during the Port Gamble conference. Truly amazing. But I, I immediately sensed a, a female child energy. I don't know if it's the same one, but yeah, probably really cool. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. We have a clock uh, that's chiming. So try to ignore that <laughs> if you can. But let's move on here. You have, mm -hmm. I guess, the second one labeled GB, a lady. Um, Yep. Let's go ahead and play that and then you can talk about it. Sure. Wow. Okay. So wow, that wow, wow, wow. That was that was the first response we got before Annabelle. And so I think Mary had asked um you know, well, who are you? And she responded with a lady. Now you'll hear, you do hear some of us investigators, just there's a couple of little chatter things. And then you can hear the ghost box quite a ways away. Um, and I think it, and it's, it's doing a sweep. And so I think uh, it sounds kind of like R2D2 to me, <laughs> yeah. but I yeah. think it's, I think it's because it was further away from my audio device and more area to echo. Right. Um, but the voice seemed to come from the same place at the top of the stairs. And it seems to, it's, I mean, it's to me sounds like the same voice as Annabelle. So, yeah, you know, Nikki it, just said that too. It sounds like the same voice. It does sound very similar. Same age yeah. bracket too, I would say. Let's, yep. let's go ahead and play that again. Phenomenal, phenomenal captures. Okay. So, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I was also going to add that uh, I believe it was Neil McNeil told me uh, that he may have, or I, th I think it was Neil. And if it's not Neil, I'm sorry, <laughs> but that somebody had gotten um, someone who had referred to themselves as the lady in that house before. Oh. And so. I think that's pretty interesting, but I think that that was reported as like uh, an older voice, older female voice. So is it the same person at different ages? I don't know. 
you know, or is there two people saying they're the lady? <laughs> All these questions, you know, but it's it's great because yeah. once you answer one or think you do, there's more that that occur there with questions. But that's the fun yeah. of it, folks, you know, trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. Phenomenal, phenomenal catcher captures. OK, so let's move on here. Uh, the next one I have in queue is a uh, clip 18. Uh, who's here? Yep. Can go ahead. And... <laughs> I'll set this one up because this is. Not, yeah. yeah. This is not Port Gamble. This is not Port Gamble. This is in a town near Port Gamble called Kingston. And it's, it's at the schoolhouse. There's an old schoolhouse that uh, is still there. And you'll hear, uh, I think somebody was reading off, one of the investigators was reading off um, EMF readings from the mail meter because it was starting to, you know, do some things. And then you'll hear uh, Mary Beth, who I was investigating with her again, you'll hear her ask a question, simple question. And it's one of the best audio session questions you can ask. And there's a response. Ah, uh, can't wait to hear it. Play that one more time. Do yeah. You mind? I love that one. What do you think it said? You know, I, I listened to these earlier today. Now, of course, I wasn't there. But what my ears are hearing, I hear Delilah. But that's just what I hear. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I just, because um, I, I hear those three, at least my ears are picking up those three syllables. That That's that's what I hear. But Yeah, what, what I heard and kind of what other people heard, too, was I am... And she oh. says, so can we play that one more time? It, it's a female voice. So right. I, was it a teacher? I don't know. <laughs> Could very well be. Wow. Yeah. And I, I don't know what your thoughts are. I always, you know, I have this theory that, you know, there could be maybe it's, an energy has this ability to answer in in different words so some people may hear one thing another group may hear another but maybe they're both right because maybe that's the energy's way of being able to impart different answers totally. i don't know just a weird yeah. theory of mine that's oh, wow. possible these very these, so this was great so in kingston right so yep. one of the school what was the name of the schoolhouse again i don't know if i should say it <laughs> oh okay no 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 yeah no never mind no if it's confidential yeah no 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 um, all right, so we have a few more here. Let's go with clip 16. Uh, gosh, can I read my writing here? It's clip 16. Is it? Oh, gosh, I can't read my lights. It's, it's the lady, lady singing, lady singing. singing. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's that same one. place, same location. Same place? Okay, this, this was straight up EVP. And what you hear is uh, me and the other investigators leaving the second floor and going down to the first floor. And I left my audio device upstairs in a room. So wow. do we, can we can we play it again? <laughs> wow. I don't know what it says, but it sounds yeah, like I was just gonna some ask sort of you. singing. Yeah, I <sighs> I, uh, the first two, the first two vocalizations or whatever, um, I have no clue what it would say. It just sounds like a noise, like a, uh, uh, and then the last one, I don't know if it's a word, but it's, it's definitely sounds kind of like a singing sort of, da -da -da -da. <laughs> absolutely. Oh my God. These are great. Wow. Okay. So clip 21, um, slippery pig i think yeah. gosh my writing is bad my goodness should have yep. been a doctor hello this this <laughs> one does this one does may contain 
some profanity from the other side. It was none yeah, of us and nobody the one, in the bar. <laughs> yep. This is the one I was wanting to ask you about when yeah. I heard it. Because... So if you don't like profanity, you may want to plug your ears. <laughs> So we could play that one more time. We'll talk about it. Wow. So, so this was this is at a brewery in Polsbo, and we were doing a special Halloween, like October sort of event there, and actually caught a few things there. Um, this clip is just super interesting to me because um, there were customers at this place. It was open. Um, and, you know, I'd say there was probably 20 plus people in there at the time. Uh, as it was like open and everything. Uh, when that particular instance happened, I was sitting at a table. It was relatively quiet. There were just people having conversations. And when I listen back, that stuck out to me because it sounds like somebody yells, hey, lo hello, or hey, you, or something, and then says, get the F out. Yes, that was clear. I heard that. And then there's some tapping, pounding. That is probably from the bar. So I don't think that that's anything paranormal. But what tripped me up on this one, nobody reacted you hear nobody go like geez or like hey whoa what's wrong with because you know if somebody's in there and yelling that somebody's going to probably you know sitting around me or you know what somebody's going to be like geez you know or you'll hear some everyone stop talking for a second exactly. you would hear everyone be like yikes you know <laughs> yeah no conversation kidding. would stop but it didn't it just carried on like nothing like it wasn't even there and and we did seem to pick up on a male spirit that maybe wasn't that happy there right um or or you know maybe he, i don't know he's telling us to get out but it's i just thought it was awesome and then I, the more i listened to it, i was like i think he's saying get the f out that was clear the hello and then and then that absolutely did you uh well of course you did any historical uh research that suggests um, a background that would kind of correlate with that. So uh, I believe there was a gentleman who had died just outside of the location. Okay. Um, some stuff fell over on him. Oh no. There's also just uh, half a block up the street. A person had committed suicide right in the, right in the middle of what is now a, uh, an intersection. And, and this is a long time ago. Um, Cause Polsbo is pretty old too. Right. And um, it was, it was from a long time ago. There's somebody um, with, you know, very involved in the town and everything had committed suicide. Uh, and so there were, you know, a few things where like the stuff falling over on a guy in the alleyway. Um, I'd have to go back for my notes, but I think that's what, what it was is somebody had died that's, back there. Well, that's why I asked you because when I heard it earlier, I almost got like a sense of danger. Like when I was listening to it, that there something was happening. Yeah. Something dangerous. Like they were trying to warn. I don't know, but that, Oh wow. That's tragic. Yeah. That, so one, one funny thing that happened with that one real quick, um, Nikki had mentioned the ghost box asking how many people were there and it gave a number. Uh, so we tried that there and we had done a head count. And then asked the question and it gave us one less. And we're like, oh, it's wrong. It's wrong. And then we started looking around again. One of the person, one of the people in the room stepped out. Oh, my before, gosh. See before that? it gave an answer. And we, then we were like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> there are more on the mark than you guys. I know I'm kidding. I'm joking. Yeah. I I'm guess totally so. Kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That one, when I heard that one, that one really got, I, I, I'm not the heebie jeebies, but I felt a lot of energy to that one. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. All right. So we have one more. I think it's clip two GB again. Um, oh yeah. Yes. yes and then there's a name of course, but yeah. So we'll play that one. Across the street. Did you live across the street? 
Steve. So. Wow. That's an interesting one to me. Uh, because I think it came from within the room. Um, and what, so I was asking, doing an, an audio session with the ghost box and I was, I was trying to ask for Annabelle and I was trying to ask her, did you live across the street? Well, then this, uh, this other thing answered. And so when I've done audio sessions with the ghost box and I'm asking yes and no questions, I always ask that if somebody's going to answer me, they need to say my name along with their answer. So I know they're talking to me right, and not somebody else. And so that was a good example of, I asked a question with my rules that I'd set beforehand and got a response. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be Annabelle. <laughs> it seems to be more of a male voice. Absolutely. I mean, very, very clear. These are super, super clear, clear uh, captures. Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah. And, and yeah. I don't know, again, I don't know if that one was from the device, the ghost box device, or if it was just in the room. I honestly can't tell. It's, yeah, we've had that happen too, where you'll get an EVP above the, the scanning of the actual, the, the device. So yeah, happens. Uh, but th th this is amazing. These were absolute fantastic captures. Thank you so much for sharing them. Thank you so of much course. for coming on the show. Who do you have coming up on your show on Tuesday next week? I'm off. I'm taking oh, a good break. Good for you. So All right. I'm, I'm on a I'm on a break uh, for August, uh, but I'm going to be back uh, in September with Jeff Davis, historian Jeff Davis, and um, I'm going to have some friends on the show with it. Have some really interesting possible uh, Sasquatch calls. Um, and I've got, it's not confirmed yet, but I've got some other exciting guests. So as soon as I get those booked, I'll be putting it out there. That's amazing. But, yeah. I have Jeff and the, the cast of the Alaskan killer, big Ferret on, on uh, let's see, August 25th. So yeah. Yeah. Jeff wanted to come on the show. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Enjoy your uh, vacation this month. And then of course, we'll be excited to have you back in September. So there yeah. you have it. Everyone, Thanks. Pete Orbea, it's always a great time Thank you. with him. Absolutely. Great discussion. Uh, just an all around uh, great person, great investigator, great radio host, psychic medium, <laughs> you name it. So, so I hope everyone checks in has... the mail, checks in the mail, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Okay, I'll, no, never mind. All right, I'll take the hundred. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyway, so, uh, hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. So, coming up next is Kenneth Drake's Voices of the Dead with a uh, horror icon, Eileen Dietz. So, really looking forward to that. So, you're going to want to tune into that at 10 p.m. Eastern right after this show. Again, I hope everyone has a fantastic week. Weekend, I mean, not week, weekend. And the next week we have. Mary Bethune and Linda Myers on. So, all right, folks, that will do it for tonight. Have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next week. Good night.